If you or someone you know is preparing for a limb amputation or has recently had one, this video is here to help you. An amputation is when part of the body is surgically removed, often a leg, finger, toe or arm. I'm making this video so that if you're undergoing this major event, you'll hopefully have a better understanding of what's involved, which in turn can hopefully help you feel more prepared and in control. So in this video, we're going to walk through why an amputation might be needed, what happens before surgery, how amputations are done, recovery and rehabilitation, and finally, the emotional impact and how to find support plus some really useful resources to assist you in this. So let's start with why someone might need an amputation. Well, there are a few reasons. It might be because of a serious infection that won't heal, poor blood flow like from peripheral arterial disease, complications from diabetes, a traumatic injury like a crush or blast wound, or a deformity that's causing pain or making movement difficult. So what happens before surgery? Now, if the amputation is planned rather than an emergency, there's usually time for a full assessment first. This might include checking your general health, especially your heart and your lungs, and taking some blood tests. It might involve looking at your remaining limb, since it may need to do more work afterwards, and a chat about how you're coping emotionally to make sure that you've got the support you need to help you manage. It's also likely that you're going to meet your physiotherapist and prosthesis. That is a specialist in artificial limbs who will help plan your recovery and talk you through your options. Some people find it helpful to speak with someone who's been through the same surgery, and typically your care team can help arrange that too. I'd also like to suggest that if you're watching this video and you've undergone an amputation or you're about to undergo one, please do feel free to share your own personal experiences in the comments section of this video, which I'm sure is going to help others who might be going through this. So now let's talk about how the surgery is actually done. Well, most amputations are done under general anaesthetic, meaning that you'll be asleep, though sometimes a spinal or epidural anaesthetic is used to numb the lower half of your body. In most cases, only a part of the limb is removed, not the entire limb. Now, the surgeon will then carefully shape the remaining part of the limb to help it function well. They'll often use a technique called myodesis, where the muscles are stitched to the bone for better strength and support. Afterwards, the wound is closed, bandaged, and sometimes a small drain is placed under the skin to stop fluid building up. So what does recovery look like? Well, after surgery, you'll be taken to a ward to recover. You might have oxygen and a drain, a catheter, which is a small, thin, flexible tube to help you pass urine, and strong pain relief. And remember, if you're in pain, always let the team looking after you know about this. Please don't be afraid or embarrassed to let them know you're in pain. This is really important, and it's really important to get on top of your pain because then it's more likely you'll get out of bed and start the recovery process sooner. Your physiotherapist will soon get you started on gentle exercises, usually within a day, to reduce the risk of clots as well as keep your circulation moving. You'll also notice swelling of the stump. Now, this is normal. You might be given a compression garment to help shape the stump, reduce pain, and make it easier to fit a prosthetic limb later on. So now let's talk about rehabilitation. Well, rehabilitation is such an important part of recovery. It can take time, it will take effort, but it's how you're going to rebuild strength, balance, and confidence. Now, your rehab will be personalized based on your goals and needs. It could include physiotherapy to keep you mobile, learning new ways to move around or transfer safely from bed to chair, as well as practicing how to manage daily tasks with or without a prosthetic limb, so things like getting dressed, preparing meals, or preparing drinks. You'll be supported by a team of physiotherapists as well as occupational therapists every step of the way, and if you feel like you need extra help and support, please let your care team know. This might include ensuring that your home environment is suitable for you, such as helping move your bed, fitting assistive railings in the bathroom, or adapting your living environment. So now let's talk about prosthetic limbs. Now, not everyone who has an amputation is going to be fitted with a prosthesis. That depends on your general health, strength, and what you need the limb to do. If a prosthetic limb is suitable for you, you'll start preparing for it in hospital. This includes things like tapping and rubbing the stump to reduce sensitivity, using compression bandages, and doing exercises to build strength and energy. Now, some prosthetic limbs are functional, 
helping you to walk or grip, while others are cosmetic and designed to look like a natural limb. So let's now discuss some practical tips for looking after your stump. Well, once you're home, it's important to keep the stump clean and healthy. To help you do this, it's important to wash it gently each day with warm water and unscented soap, keep it dry and check for any signs of infection, so things like oozing or a bad smell or breakdown of the stump skin. If you're using a prosthetic, clean the socket regularly and wear clean stump socks every day and moisturize the skin if it's dry, just not right before wearing your prosthesis. Now your stump may change shape over time, especially as the swelling reduces, so the number of socks or the fit of your prosthesis might need to be adjusted over time. So now let's just briefly cover a concept that's called phantom limb pain. So many people feel sensations or even pain in the limb that is no longer there. This is called phantom limb pain. It's very real and it happens because the brain still is sending signals to that part of the body. Now some people feel brief flashes of pain, whereas others might feel aching, burning or tingling. Now phantom pain usually does improve over time, but treatments like pain relief, massage, TENS machines, mirror therapy, or even antidepressants and talking therapies can all help. So please do speak to your team if you're struggling. So let's discuss the emotional impact of amputation and where you can find more support. It's normal to have a mix of feelings after an amputation. You might feel sad, frustrated, or even grief. This is a major life change and there's no right or wrong way to feel. Some people might feel anxiety or depression, and those who've had emergency surgery might be at risk of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. So please do talk to someone, your care team, a psychologist, a support group, a therapist. You don't have to go through this alone. And talking of this, I also want you to know that you're not alone and that help is out there. There are loads of brilliant organizations that can help you. Connecting with others who've gone through this too is really important. So this includes places like the Limbless Association, the Douglas Bader Foundation, Steel Bones, the Amputation Foundation, and Blesma for veterans. Now you'll find links in the description box below to all of these amazing organizations and their websites. Finally, amputation is a huge adjustment, physically and emotionally, but with the right care, rehab, and support, many people go on to live very full and active lives. If this video helped you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've been through this yourself and you want to share your story to help others, I'd love to hear from you. So please do share your story in the comment section. Thanks for watching and take care.